Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Grant Cameron, and I want to do a little session today on a good friend of mine from the past. Um, there's a lot of discussion now about um, testimony in front of Congress that we get to the data that involves the crash saucers and the bodies, and this is what most people are interested in. So I found, I was scanning my files for the internet and I hopefully will put a link to those files in the in the description to this uh, video. Uh, but I came across a letter from an old friend of mine, Len Stringfield, who's now has been dead for a number of years. Len Stringfield was the guy who started the whole cross saucer thing. He's the guy that basically became famous for the whole thing. So I wanted to do a, a little segment because I found an interesting letter from 1988 that he wrote me which uh, I want to read, and it sort of ties into the disclosure efforts that may be going on right now. But first of all, let me give an, uh, sort of an outline for people who really don't know, because a lot of people really don't know who Len Stringfield uh, was. A lot of people just came into the field now. Len Stringfield was a pioneering figure in the field of UFOs, known for his relentless dedication to unraveling the mysteries surrounding unidentified flying objects. He was born in 1920 in Cincinnati, Ohio. And he had a long time fascination with unexplained phenomena in the skies, which ultimately led him to one of the most respected and influential UFO, become one of the most respected and UFO researchers of his time. Uh, it started his, his interest started when he was a member of the United States Army Air Force in World War II, he was stationed in India and he encountered reports from military personnel about strange aerial phenomena that were defying conventional information. These early encounters uh, planned the, planted the seeds for his future career in UFOs. After the war, he returned to civilian life, but still kept on with the UFO stuff. In the 1950s and 60s, this is the important part, as the UFO phenomena gained popularity and media attention, Stringfield began collecting and cataloging UFO reports from various sources. He had a keen ability to sort through anecdotal accounts and separate them from more credible sightings. Stringfield's dedication to weeding out hoaxes and misidentifications earned him the reputation for integrity within the UFO community. One of Stringfield's most significant contributions to the field of UFO research was his focus on investigating alleged UFO crashes and retrieval operations. At one point, I think he told me and others that he had between 200 and 300 sources that uh, were giving him material on either crashes or alien autopsies, uh, which made him the uh, all-time researcher on the subject and made it indicate that people inside the government were feeding him material. So these groundbreaking reports and incidents often involved the recovery of uh, purported extraterrestrial technology and bodies, and it shed lights on the possibility of government cover-up and secrecy surrounding UFOs. Uh, Stringfield's meticulous documentation of these cases, which he referred to as crash retrieval incidents, provided valuable insight in the potential interference and interactions between humans and unidentified beings from other worlds. He gave his first lecture at Dayton, Ohio in 1978. I was there. I was there to talk to him about uh, the former Canadian director of the Flying Saucer Program, Wilbur Smith, uh, which very much interested Len Stringfield. When I got there, they announced that he had been actually moved to another hotel because there was a, a death threat against him. And I really didn't get to talk to him at that conference, but I did interact with him a number of times over the years. Um, significantly, 1978 was two years before the Roswell incident written by Bill Moore uh, uh, became published, and that was the first time that ever anybody had ever heard the name Roswell. So Len Stringfield's talking about craft saucer stuff and bodies two years before uh, the book about the 1947 crash at Roswell in New Mexico. He was, Stringfield was also a prolific author. He published several books and numerous articles on UFOs and related topics. Uh, his main books would have been Situation Red, The UFO Siege, and The UFO Crash Retrievals, The Inner Sanctum. 
and this uh, dealt with uh, a lot of the details of the uh, material he'd been given on cross saucer recoveries and alien autopsies. Uh, he was a staunch advocate for UFO disclosure. He believed the truth about UFOs and potential extraterrestrial contact should be shared with the public. Uh, his advocacy efforts included speaking at conferences, conducting interviews, and collaborating with other pot uh, potential UFO researchers. His dedication to transparency and his insistence on the importance of government disclosure inspired many others to join the quest for answers. Um, now, he detailed a, a lot of um, crash saucer material, but this has always been a big part of the UFO uh, community. I want to read a, a sort of a letter that was published in 1950 from a guy by the name of Ed Sullivan um, that was talking about um, uh, craft saucer uh, material. 